What's going on, guys? Welcome to another episode of Eastern Current. We've got a great show for you. We've been doing a lot of like northern North Carolina coast and Virginia, um, Chesapeake Bay stuff lately, but I think it's just such a so many great you know things we can apply there in North Carolina as well as South Carolina, and 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 a lot of times you just open your eyes to these new styles of fishing, new tactics, new ideas that get your wheels turning when you talk to anglers that are fishing for the same fish in very different water. So um, that's something that I really like to try to do. I feel like a lot of the things that I I do here in North Carolina that, that kind of have helped me evolve into a better angler have been because of something that I've learned somewhere else on a different piece of water with someone who doesn't even, you know, fish fish where I fish. So hopefully y'all will find this uh, true today. So I found this guy um, through the Speckled Truth Instagram page. I like, clicked on a really cool picture of a big speckled trout and I was like, oh, this guy's from Virginia. Um, and then I started looking at kayak fishes and it just seems really cool. So um, I'll introduce y'all to him in just a second, but before that, just want to remind y'all that y'all can go check out our Patreon page if you want to help support us financially. Um, I do guide trip breakdowns from all my guide trips on there, talking about you know what works, what worked for me tackle wise, kind of the the tip, the tricks and the trends that I noticed that day on the water. Um, a lot of what I've been talking about in there recently has to do with what how, how to find fish when it's raining every day all day long, and so um, I just kind of stay relative with what's going on. Um, also, there's there's a few different tiers there, and there's the ability to, if you're a business or you know just a, a single person, to sponsor the podcast for a little bit more, where you can actually become a sponsor that I'll talk about on each one of these podcasts in the beginning. Um, so if that's something that interests you, go check it out on the Patreon page, or feel free to just hit me up on any of the social platforms that we have here for Eastern Current or my personal stuff. Also, go check out Eastern Current Fishing Facebook group. It's just for all the listeners to come together and be able to talk and bounce ideas off each other and maybe go fishing together. So check that out. But that is enough of me talking. Time to bring on Charlie Church, one of the coolest names I've ever heard. What's going on, man? <laughs> How's it going, man? Going good. Do you When you're like catching way more fish than your buddies you're fishing with, you're like, I'm taking out a church. <laughs> No, no, I'm you never right said now. that. You're what? <laughs> I'm struggling right now. You're struggling two, right now. Two tough trips. Two tough trips. It's, they just make you better. They make you better angler long term. Yeah, the third trip was good. Third trip was good. <laughs> the last two have been tough. Yeah, so we were just talking pre-show. This is kind of like you're getting rolling pretty good into your your trout season up there, right? This is kind of prime time. Yeah. So um, May is when it starts getting really good. Well, okay. I guess April is more of a, like you get migratory fish and inlets. Um, but for me, May is kind of the start. Uh, June is a good time to get some big fish and uh, I won't stop until I guess December, but I'm, I'll still fish for them in the winter, but December's kind of the end for me. Yeah. What is your, what do y'all's water temps get up to or get down to there in Virginia that time of year? Ooh. Um, so you don't want them in the forties, but they'll, they'll get uh, low forties. Yeah. Um, if they get in the 30s, fish die. Do you um, see a lot of fish kills up there, or do the, are those fish kind of try, are they pretty good at moving out of those those larger estuaries? Um, so 2018 was our last one. Uh, we had fish die, uh, but I mean it still fished well that year. Yeah. Um, so I think it's more of a school by school basis. Gotcha. Uh, some of the fish that winter in uh, areas that aren't as deep, they're not going to make it if it gets real cold. Um, some that are in deeper water, uh, they're fine. And then the migratory fish that go see you guys are fine too. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, that's one thing that's crazy. People don't realize that these fish migrate up and down the coast like crazy. I had a guy up that fishes on that fishes the Tangier Sound up in nor- northern in the Chesapeake Bay. And he's like, man, we catch so many tagged fish from North Carolina. It's crazy. I mean, it's not really that far, but to think that that's the same population of fish we're both beating on, you know, back and forth. But before we get too far into this, give us your backstory. I, I was getting carried away there. Like, tell us how you got into fishing, kind of how fishing's brought you to where you are today in your fishing career um so I, i've fished my whole life i mm-hmm. mean uh like probably since i was like three or four um i lived in northern virginia for high school and college uh, my grandparents lived here okay. uh, in Virginia beach so i spent probably like every other weekend coming down here to fish uh, with the goal of um finding a job down here and moving here uh, i got burnt out on a job out of school went up and worked in alaska for a year uh, no, it was a lot better. I was fishing every day. Yeah. Um, went back to, uh, the office, uh, lasted, I think three more years. And then uh, my wife and I decided Virginia beach was the place for us. So nice. We've been here for four years now. And haven't looked back. Yeah. Uh, awesome. It's a cool area. I've got some really good friends f- from college that both live up there, um, in Virginia beach. And I don't know, PJ Terranova and I- Ian Sellers. Are they probably, there's so many people in Virginia I, beach. I, I know Ian. You know Ian? Yeah. Oh, sweet. Right on. Yeah. He's yeah. a good, he's a good buddy of cool. mine. 
I called him today to say, hey, I'm having a buddy from uh, Virginia Beach on for the podcast tonight. You should be on the lookout for it. So, oh yeah, awesome. Ian's, Ian's a good buddy of mine. So that, that's cool. It's a small world. Yeah, he yeah. worked. He worked for a while at like a fly shop or a tackle shop up there, I think. Yeah, um, great outdoors. Great outdoors, sweet. Great, yeah. great outdoor provision. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we've got those. In he's North he's a good well. dude. He's a really good dude, man. He's like gotten the fishing bug big time. I saw he caught a Kobe the other day. <laughs> I'm still a for nice him. one too. Yeah, it was a really nice one. It was a really nice one. So yeah. shout out to you, Ian. You better listen to this, and, and you're, you're <laughs> you got shouted out on the podcast. But yeah, he's a cool dude. He he's he's fired up about some fishing now. It seems like so good. Um, good. But that, yeah, that's cool, man. Virginia Beach is a cool area, and I didn't even really realize until I started. I mean, I knew there were some big trout up here, but like once I started doing this podcast and like kind of looking at people's Instagrams and people to bring on the podcast, I'm like, there's a lot of nice trout caught in Virginia and in the Chesapeake Bay. And I just, yeah. it's just kind of like it just you you get so focused on where you are and where you're fishing, you, you forget. But um, I'm like, God, I gotta make some trips up there to do some trout fishing. But it's like to catch big trout in places like you've got to be dialed it's so hard to just make a road trip and mm-hmm. go somewhere and like catch i mean you, i could probably come up there and catch some trout but i would have just have much more luck on catching probably a big one here in north carolina but um, has that's it all how i feel about north carolina <laughs> <laughs> it's uh you know you learn your pieces of water and what to look for and as soon as you kind of slip away from them it, it can be tough but has it always been trout for you? Has that kind of been where the bug's been at? You've always been addicted to chasing those trout up there or, or uh, anything else? I've been into everything um, gotcha. for a while. Like in, when I was in Northern Virginia, it was smallmouth. Okay. Um, smallmouth are awesome. Yeah, they are. Uh, I went through like a striper phase uh, when we had a lot more striper. Um, poppy drum, red drum, they're fun. But I think trout kind of took it over like four years ago. Um once I started targeting big ones, I was like, oh, this is, this is a different game. Like you yeah. put in the work to get rewarded. Um, big trout's totally different than a small trout. Uh, and it kind of, it's addicting. Uh, it's super addicting. It's I, really addicting. I think what's so fun about trout fishing, it's almost like bass fishing in the way of how technical it can be like a redfish and a striper and any of these other inshore fish. It's like you, if you get, like a big drum is probably easier to catch than a puppy drum. Like a, a bull redfish. It's like they're just so vicious. You can move anything in front of them, they're going to eat it. Same okay. thing with like, a, you know, striper, those bigger, maybe not big striper, but like striper are real aggressive. They feed hard. But trout, it's like there's ago. this whole science. Yeah, maybe 15 years ago out there. There's this whole science behind like when they feed and how to get them to feed and fishing these little <laughs> light baits and fishing eight pound, you know, fluorocarbon leader. And there's yep. just so much to break down. So, um, that kind of leads me to we were talking beforehand, like what well, kind of what we want to talk about through here. But what do you look for up there? Like if you're if you're going out to a new area or an area you fish, like take me through your mental process of like what do I want to fish? Like what what am I looking for that's going to hold fish? Um, so I start like the first and most important thing is bait. Yeah. Um, my my goal is to target a big bite. Um, I I'm not really interested in like uh, the smaller fish. I mean they're fun. But um, I, I will leave those fish if I'm in them. I'm yeah. looking for a bigger bigger bite. Uh, and the, so I'm looking for mullet first or a big bunker. Uh, that's what the big trout for me are usually around. Um, if I see silver sides, I don't go near them. Uh, I actively avoid silver sides and peanut bunker. Um, shrimp is kind of like a, a big distraction for me because you can find some nice fish around shrimp. Yeah. Shrimp and a lot of them. But uh, that mullet and menhaden, it's it's so predictable that that that's where I'm always aiming to be. Wow. Um, and when you say mullet too, like what size mullet are you talking about? Any mullet or is there a size class of mullet you're looking for to be? I'm looking for like uh, six inches or better. Okay. Uh, usually average is about eight. Um, so like, like some of the big striped mullet, like the hard head mullet. Yeah. Cool. I mean, uh, the, when I was out last, uh, it was frustrating, but I had found the fish. Um, I had, I had found a school of, like really nice trout. Uh, what was frustrating was uh, they weren't chewing. Uh, the, <laughs> the sun came out right when I got there. The wind switched, um, and I mean, I saw a toilet bowl flushes. So I was like, I know they're here. Yeah. Um, I got one short strike, but I, I worked them for two hours, and I was like, this isn't happening. I even paddled over them as I was leaving and spooked them. <laughs> Did you? Oh, no. <laughs> I do the same thing though. When you know the fish are there and you can't get them to eat, you're like, you almost just have to. Like, was I right? Were they really there? And you, you patrol the motor pass too close or you yep. pull over them. Yeah, that's – and then you're like, why did I do that? You have this guilty feeling the rest of the day of, like, blowing the fish out of their happy little spot. All right, so yeah. so the your bait is the, the main thing you're targeting, the, the mullet um, and the menhaden. 
bait, especially if I can find bait shallow. Okay. Um, so if I can find like mullet or big bunker in like the, the two to four foot range, especially in the two foot range, that's like, that's where I want to be. Um, there's a, there's a way that, uh, you know, like a mullet will like free jump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, sometimes it's, you can tell like there's nothing happening and they're just acting. Yeah. Just like a little happy jump. (laughs) Well, sometimes they get launched out of the water. Uh, like if you see them jump in like a weird unnatural direction, that is exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I'll I'll sometimes paddle in an area and look for that. And if I see that I, I set up, uh, I'll fish there for 30 minutes to an hour. And that that's that's by far the most effective route for me. Wow, that's cool. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's good for me to learn be, or to hear because so often, I mean, we have so many large mullet here, um, and and there's areas I feel like, and we'll get into this too. There's areas where like, okay, I know there's trout that are living in these areas, so I need to look for those things. Like, there's some creeks I'll go in, and I know there's not trout in there. Those mullet are in there. Those big men hating are in there. But it's like. I know that maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm thinking of like these small little creeks that get really shallow with the tide, mm-hmm. and, you know, and I'm like, the trout aren't living in here this time of year at least. But to, to, so I just, I, I've, I've gotten so good at tuning out those big mullet when they jump because my clients oh, are no. always like, they're like, is that a redfish? And I'm like, no, no, it's not a redfish. I'm like, is that a redfish? And I'm like, no, 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 it's not a redfish. So I need to start like paying, when I'm in those trouty areas again, I need to start paying attention to those, those big mullet because I know they eat them, but I just so, I'm just so quick to write them off because of the fact of like no it's not a redfish no it's not a trout but maybe it is it is it has been a trout a lot Uh, i've gotten to the point where like um you know how like if you're tarpon fishing you see a fish roll and someone like instantly cast right where it rolled yep um i I don't cast right where the mullet jump i'll aim like in the 15 foot range like you know the the trout's in there but they're they're not eating from their tail they're trying to get it somewhere where they're going right right and i mean i've had it where like i see it cast and like first twitch boom um that's so, awesome i mean it, it's cool it works yeah um, so yeah baits first thing i look for um i mean uh feeding slicks that's that's a good way to know where to go uh-huh. um the, the smaller the slick the better because that means it's brand new yeah um i mean if you get like a nice calm day you can look down and be like oh there's fish down there yeah uh bird activity but not, not in like the like seagulls blitzing it uh, i'm looking for like uh maybe like an osprey flying over and like stopping and when when it stops it's looking at a fish but it's not diving because that fish is too big um i found i found a really nice fish the other day that, that i lost doing that wow uh, and um sometimes like pelicans staged up uh that's another good air like sign like they're here they eat for a living i should probably stay in this area yeah um, so those are probably the, the main three I look for, uh, fourth, like once you're there, uh, water clarity. Um, and like when I say water clarity, I mean like, uh, within the spot, like usually there'll be like dirty water and clean water. I, I try to find the clean water. Okay. Um, and by clean, I mean like trout green, you don't want like crystal clear. You want a little tent. Um, that that's by far the best. Yeah. I think that little tent just adds so, like the fish are just so much more apt to eat. They they can't quite make things out as well. It hides your leader so much better. The bait looks more natural. Yeah. So uh, that's huge. Too, too, too clear is tough. Yeah, it gets <laughs> really real tough. tough. That's when you're like fishing an Ed rig at really slow with like six pound mm-hmm. test, and the, that's like our winter time here. And you just let it sit there on the bottom so that it pisses the trout off. You let it sit there for like thirty seconds. But um, well, cool. So when you're looking for an area um are, are you looking for current up there are you are you is it more of a still water fishery are you looking for oysters or structure like if you're if you're so you're not you don't know if the water's clear you don't know if there's bird activity you don't know if there's bait but you're looking at like a map and you're like okay i want to mm-hmm. see this what are you looking are you do you want structure what do you want um yeah stru- so underwater structure okay uh like oysters oyster cages docks grass um larger flats mm-hmm. uh and anything that would congregate bait. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have, we have a lot of water up here. Yeah. So there's a lot of room for exploring. And uh, I, I do that. And I, <laughs> I get out and find something. And, I mean, if I find the things I listed, it's like, all right, I'll come back here. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. Definitely some shallow water for me. Uh, but when I say I'm targeting shallow water, that, that's kind of just what I do. I have a good friend who he puts up huge numbers and he's fishing deep water. Yeah. So everyone's got their own, their own method. Definitely. 
Um, <laughs> is Current a big player up there, or are you? is it more of a stillwater fishery like the Pamlico Sound? Oh, um, no, we have some big tides. Yeah, some big um, tides, okay. Yeah, it, so, I mean, I, I fish. I don't target a specific tide. Um, incoming, outcoming are both good. Uh, you can use, like, the incoming to get colder water if you're looking for, like, um, I don't know, summer bite. Uh, you can use, so one cool thing in regards to the bait, you can use a low tide, get there, bait usually stack up somewhere where they can't be reached on a low tide, and the second that tide comes in, so do the trout. Yeah. So, like, target a low tide in an area that looks promising, uh, get out there, find the bait, sit, and once it comes in, you'll notice things are moving. Wow, that, um, that's huge. Uh, mm -hmm. do, do you see those menhaden kind of stacking up in those shallow flats as well, hiding from the trout when the, when the tide gets low? Uh, you can. Um, so I, I saw that uh, two trips ago. Oh, cool. Uh, and they got worked. I wish I had some live bait. <laughs> I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I've, I've never caught a trout on live bait, um, but I considered it that day. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> when they're smashing something and you don't have it, it's like, oh, I could definitely throw a live bait right now. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hate myself. <laughs> I, I had a trip like a, a year ago where um, I caught a nice fish that day. I caught a, like a five pound trout on top water. Nice. But right, right after I released that, I saw this like like eight inch bunker fly out of the water and like a toilet bowl flush. I was like, oh my God. This is <laughs> I, I didn't get any more fish out of that school, but I couldn't help but wonder how, like how many or how big they were. We're going to dive into tackle more, but have you tried fishing any large swim baits, any large profile swim baits for trout? I threw one two days ago. Okay. I threw, so the first time I've ever thrown one, I threw a Magic Swimmer from Sea Bile. Yeah, yeah. I threw the six and a half, um, which is big. Yeah. Uh, it got hit pretty hard. Uh, I didn't hook the fish, but that one's got the weedless hook, right? In the in the soft yeah. plastic. See, that's the thing about that that bait. I threw that a lot in, in the Keys this spring for baby tarpon and for snook, mm -hmm. and I had so much trouble hooking the fish. It would get the bites. I mean, it would get way more bites than any other soft plastic we were throwing. But the way that hook was exposed, it was so hard to hook those fish. And tarpon are pretty hard fish to hook anyways. But oh, wow. but snook, like we should have been hooking the snook better, I thought. And and so that would scare me with a trout, like especially if you get a big trout bite on it. But, man, they swim so, so good. They look good. They look uh, really good. I haven't good. figured out the hook set with them yet. Um, I started little stinger. Slicks <laughs> as well. Have you heard of those? Well, oh, uh, slicks. Slick. It's like the little – they look like the um, – They look like a devil. Um, yeah, they look like the devil by uh, – who makes that again? Uh, Paul Brown. Yeah, Paul Brown. Yeah. But the slick like, is like you rig it on a weedless hook, right? Yeah, and I'm okay. struggling with them too. I, I missed some really nice fish this year just because I think you got to tighten up the drag and blast them. And I'm not used to that. That's so. one thing I found with those weedless worm hooks is if you – on any bait, if you fish it with a soft tip rod – Mm -hmm. you will I, it really hard to set the hook really hard to bury the hook like you look at those bass guys that fish frogs and stuff like that even with two hooks yeah. on it and they're fishing like a broomstick to bury that hook in the fish's mouth i think you really need to do the same with those those weedless hooks and not always in certain fish like a redfish you can still bury that hook pretty well um a weedless hook with a light tip rod but but you know a lot of fish it's very tough especially uh, like a trout, I think, where they eat head first a lot of times. And then you set that hook, and that weedless hook just kind of swivels out of their mouth if you don't yeah, have the way to yeah. really really pin it in there. Yeah, I mean, I feel like the next one I hook on that, I'm going to, like, fall out of my kayak. I'm going <laughs> to hook it so hard. You're going to start pedaling backwards before you as you're winding up and just, <laughs> boom. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Um, so what else yeah. are you looking for? Is there anything else key that you're kind of checking out weather-wise or, like, um, tie, you said tide doesn't really matter, but like salooner tables or anything like that. Um, so weather's huge for me. Um, overcast is the best by far. Um, I mean, uh, winds, uh, I'm looking for anything that's not out of the East, uh, and, and Northeast is fine if you can like do it safely. Um, but West, North, uh, Southwest, all that's good. Um, because so with, in, in the bay, the wind dictates where the good water is. So like a westerly wind will like, you'll you'll be on the lee, so you'll have the clean water. So I'm targeting that. Um, and then uh, avoiding high pressure days. Uh, I think I've only caught like maybe one big trout on a high pressure day. Um, looking for stable or dropping pressure versus rising. Okay. Um, as far as moon, uh, I don't like full moons. 
Um, so I, I, I write down all the big fish I catch, just look for patterns. And I, I've only got one on a full moon. And that was like in the fall, like when it, it's, when it's on. Yeah. Um, I'm looking for like before or after the full moon or before or after the new moon. Mm-hmm. Um, and then if I can time like a major or minor, uh, I'll, I'll arrive early or stay late for that. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> yeah. That's, that stuff's true. Uh, I tried to write down like a tidal coefficient to figure out if that was worthwhile, and it, I don't think it is. I'm, I don't even write it down anymore. Yeah. So has keeping those logs really helped you learn and become a better angler? You think? Like, do you think there's a lot of stuff that would have just slipped through the cracks and you would have forgotten if you weren't keeping, you know, heavy logs? Oh yeah. Oh, a- absolutely. I mean, um, like last year, I was limited on days I could go because I had a new baby, so I, I kind of looked for patterns and it, like I'd target that day and that day. Um, and I think at one point I had a streak where I had uh, three citations and three trips. Wow! Just by hitting the right days. Yeah. Um, but it, it's huge. I mean, if if you have a good day, write it down. If you have a bad day, write it down. Um, because you you learn what to look for, uh, and you learn patterns and where they travel, where they return. Um, because the fish come back year after year to where you find them. Yeah. So. I I would say ever or think looking back at it now, every trip that I went on this fall and early winter where I had, I was before or after a new moon and I had overcast conditions, maybe drizzly rain. I had a citation fish. Yeah. Um, and it, it's really crazy. Like you see, I don't write it down, but now thinking about like the citations that I got this, this winter, it was always those conditions. Um, yeah. And I, I had some trips too, like on a new or like around the new moon where it was really nice out and I didn't catch fish. I mean, I caught trout, but I didn't catch big trout. And then you go back to the same areas and, and you catch them on those nasty days. So, um. Yeah, I mean, I, I took a day off this winter. Um, it had been blowing northeast like hard for three days. And it like just dialed down to being like fishable. Uh, it's still raining, still light drizzle. It was awesome. It was awesome. Uh, yeah, I had uh, one citation that day, probably like 15, 20 fish over the 20 inch range. Um, just so good. Yeah, that's uh, sweet. That is so yeah. sweet. Uh, I think so many people up in your area too, like just, I, mean, I could be wrong about this, but think that it's a fall fishery for trout fishing, like that you have mm-hmm. to just fish in the fall. But do you feel like yeah. that's a myth up there? Like people think that, but you can, maybe it's better in the summer. Uh, so it, it's best in the fall. It's best in the um, fall. I think the per- the percentage of big fish for small fish is higher in the spring and summer. Okay. It, cool. it, actually, I, I know it's higher in the spring and summer. Cause you um, have migratory lot- fish as well. You think um, uh, along with your own. So we have migratory and resident fish. They're spawning. So if you you can effectively look for those spawners, and then your your percent of big fish goes way up. It's just it's a grind. Like, is there uh, a type the spring, of area those fish are spawning in? Like you like know okay this is where these fish spawn, or is it just kind of more so you just find the schools of them? Um, so they're going up the bay, okay. uh, like probably an hour and a half drive from Virginia Beach. Uh, they're on grass flats. Gotcha. Spawn. Um, so I mean. I get up super early, make the drive, uh, and go to where they are. Nice. Um, and then, I mean, I've had days where I catch like one fish, uh, but it's a good one. And I've had days where I catch one fish and it's not a good one. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's a lot more of a grind. Right. Right. That that's I, fun though, to like really dedicate yourself to a type of fishing and to a species to learn it and to just become, you know, so infatuated with it. Do you ever find yourself like, God, I hate trout. Like I want to start doing something else. Or is it just keep, it keeps feeding the passion? That's how I feel right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, I mean, I'm already trying to figure out the next day to go. Yeah. Um, I get, I get frustrated with them, but I, I like that about them because they're challenging, uh, and they reward hard work. Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah. And like, if you grind at them enough, it, you'll break through as long as you, you're putting yourself in positions to get those opportunities. It feels like a success to me, even if I lose the fish or like, don't even get a bite. So you just have to adjust your mindset. For sure. Now, do you feel like, because you fish mostly out of a kayak, correct? Mm -hmm. Do you feel like with a kayak in your area, like, or in the Chesapeake Bay, you can target a lot of the main areas that those trout are? Or do you feel like a boat would be, obviously you can change spots quicker on a boat, but can you access Mm -hmm. most of the trouty water from a kayak? Oh, totally. Totally. Um, I think, I think it might even be better. Um, so the, bo- the boat provides the advantage of like being comfortable to fish out of mm-hmm. and you can travel. Uh, but I'd be worried about spooking fish shallow. Yeah. Um, with the kayak, I mean, I've had 
fish hit, like at my rod tip. Wow. Uh, I, I mean, I think I need to take it a step further and wade, uh, but I still like being able to be like, hey, there's like mullet like 100 yards down there. I'm going right now. Right, uh, right. Instead of being like a track star and sprinting down the flat. Right. Um, do, is a lot of the stuff you're fishing hard bottom where you could easily wade to those fish? Uh, it's a mix. It's a mix. Um, and, and that's a good thing. Um, so hard shell, um, mud. Um, I, I like looking for those changes. And then, I mean, right now I'm targeting hard shell because it's a little colder. Uh, in the winter, like December, I'll be looking on the mud. Awesome. Um, that's kind of how we are too. It's like, th- that's the problem with waiting is, is y- you could easily <laughs> and very quickly go from nice hard bottom to straight pluff mud where you're up to your knees and there's oyster oh, yeah. shells in it. So yeah, I've lost shoes that way for sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk a little bit about your tactics. Like once you're in an area and you feel like there's fish mm-hmm. there, or you know, there's fish there, how are you going about effectively fishing it? Um, so uh, I bring three rods fully rigged up. Okay. Uh, one, I'll do like a top water. Um, one I'll have with a 27 MR or like catch five, like a hard bait. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the other one's kind of just, if it's, if it's in the winter, it's a fat boy or a broken back. Uh-huh. Uh, besides that, it's kind of whatever I feel like they're on. Um, and then, uh, I, I use top water a lot to search if they're reacting to it. If, if they're not reacting to it, I'm not going to throw it. Yeah. Um, usually like sunrise, I'll get some nice blow ups. Um, and then I'm just looking for bait looking for activity uh moving around kind of fast uh i, I work my uh, hard baits really fast uh-huh. so and a cast move um look for activity and try and find where they are yeah that's huge so i noticed you said a catch is it you catch 5000 that you're throwing or um so i i like uh here i got isn't that a bait catch 5000 uh, uh you combine two uh, a catch so 2000 catch, so catch 2000 yes. is a custom one actually this one's I mean, oh, Mirror should make this because it's awesome. Uh, and then Catch 5. Um, both are good. The both Catch really 5 good. and the Catch 2000. I was calling it the Catch 5000. Okay, so, so you didn't this, mention the 17 MR, though, because that's like a lot of people in North Carolina, that's the bait. So are, do you not like oh, messing with the smaller profile? Uh, people like them up here, too. Um, you know, I, I kind of like the 27s. Uh, I should fish the 17 more on, like, high-pressure days, but I've just had so much luck on a 27 that, like, if it's between the two, I'm, I'm throwing a 27. It, well, it's also crazy what small trout will eat, too. I mean, they'll yep. eat massive swim baits. I've caught 14-inch oh, yeah. trout on 7-inch swim baits, like 7-inch soft plastic paddle tails and stuff like that. So um, you, you, you're not scaring away the little fish with a 27 MR. A lot of people are nervous to throw it, but it's oh. I'm with you. I like the 20, 27 a lot. I mean, I've caught dinks on a, like a full size super spook. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> they're they're hungry when they are. They are hungry. I think they think it's their buddy, and they're trying to come hang out with it, and they end up getting hooked. <laughs> but uh, no, that that that's funny, and, and that's something that's scary at first to throw those larger baits because your confidence is so tied into like a little small oh, paddle man. tail or a little tiny you know streaks, little fluke by Z-Man or something like that, which trout eat. But you definitely, I think you eliminate some smaller bites. But you definitely attract that hungrier fish that might just want to move one, day, one you know, for one big bit bite that day, you know, like a big pogey or a big mullet on the surface. So, yeah, I've heard a lot of people like they're trying to learn how to fish like a Paul Brown. Mm-hmm. And what I did and my suggestion to them is don't bring anything else. Like just bring that. It's a versatile bait. Oh, that gives me anxiety just thinking about it. <laughs> you'll, you'll make yourself learn. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but and once you get confidence, I mean, like you'll reach for that like without even thinking about it yeah um so kind of you kind of got to force yourself to get confidence with some baits and that's the most important part by far yeah i agree i, I think once you find that confidence in it you realize okay i can really catch them on just about anything i just need yep. to throw it enough and know how to retrieve it um one question that people bring up all across the board like all the time is is about how to work a mirror lure and about how to work uh you know a paul brown lure you want to go through kind of like the way that you like to to fish those two different lures um, so I'll start with the 27. Okay. Um, I do like a three to five second sink. And I, I mean, I work it pretty fast and like a two twitch to the side. Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, catch 2000, uh, which another great bait, same sink rate, but then I twitch up. I'll do like one or two hard twitches. Uh, same with the catch five, but even, even a harder twitch. Okay. And then um, 
Paul Brown. Uh, let me see. So on uh, those twitches, it, tell me this real quick. On those twitches, how far is your rod tip traveling? And then how long of a pause between your twitches are, are you giving it? Um, so the 2000 uh, is the longest pause. I'll okay. do like a like pop, hard pop, and then I let it sit for like a second or two. Because that, that's usually when they're going to hit it. Yep. The five, I do a little bit less of a pause. Um, and the 27, I just rip it. Gotcha. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll like pause it a little bit, but I'm I'm working it hard. You're just kind of sewing it in, almost like you're working a top water underwater kind of twitch 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 twitch, twitch where you got it kicking back and forth. You doing something different than that? Um, it, I probably twitch it twice every five to six seconds. Gotcha. Um, yeah, because I mean, if I see mullet jumping like I talked about earlier, I'm throwing the 27 and I'm working it like that mullet's about to get destroyed. Yeah, yeah like he's freaking <laughs> I'm out. Getting out of, yep. Um, fat boy, I've been the uh, tail down usually uh-huh. like that, um, and I do like three three soft pops with that, and then I let it sink. Um, I feel like the fat boy is more sensitive. Like if I twitched it like a catch two thousand, it'd be like flying over my head. <laughs> um, so three soft pops and let it sink. Um, you can work it like a top water underwater, and that works. Uh, you can also work it like a top water up top, and then drop it, and they'll hit it on the drop. Um, so, I mean, you can do everything with that. Yeah, yeah they're, they're cool baits. So if you had one lure that would be like your search bait, you're going in a new area, it's your confidence bait, you're trying to kind of work through there and locate the fish, what would it be? There you go. Um, this is a Pilchard 27. Sweet. Uh, Greenback, uh, that would be it. Um, let's see. Two of my three biggest trout were on that, and the, the third, the one I recently got, the eight and a half, was on a color similar to that. Oh, cool. Um, identical to that. So, right on. I mean, I like that green back. Yeah, that, it's such a knack. That color right there looks the most like a Menhaden flicking underwater to me, at least from above water. <laughs> it look, The color yeah. matches so well. I don't care if you're in like really clear water or real dark, real stained water. It just looks really natural. But when you pull one of those, when you pull a, a pilcher out of the water or a, or a Menhaden or any of those bait fish that are like that, that's kind of the color that they look. I mean, that's like a perfect. Yeah mixture between a pilcher and a manhaden color wise yeah so, um, um i mean I, I fish a ton of lures too so for me like for my biggest ones to be on that that's enough confidence from, that's the only one i'm bringing yeah for sure so tell me yeah. real quick i, I can't believe i asked this question what is your biggest trout in virginia um so honestly not that big uh that eight and a half was my biggest nice um yeah so i've got three 27s uh one this year one 2019 one 2018 um, I know I've hooked bigger fish. Uh, I've seen one that kind of left my knees shaking. Yeah, I'm um, right there with you. I cannot break the 27 to the hand. Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, uh, I've broken off a handful and pulled off a handful that are bigger, but 27 is like my. I cannot break it. It's gonna. We're gonna do it this year. You're gonna send me a picture this summer of you with a I one over 27. I thought I had it with that eight and a half because it, it jumped, and I was like, oh, that's a silver salmon. Like this is, <laughs> this is definitely a 30 inch fish. That's and awesome. I got it to the boat, and it just looked like a freaking football. Yeah. Um, like, awesome fish. Um, but, yeah, I still got to get the 30. Yeah. It, would you rather have a 10-pound trout that was 27 inches or a 30-pound – not a 30-pound trout, a 30-inch trout <laughs> that was, like, four and a half, five pounds? I, I mean, like, a week ago I would have said the, uh, the heavier one. But now no, I won't. I the, the the inches. I, people kind of like it, it's all about the inches with trout the weight can vary so much but you want that 30 inch mark i think yeah i mean i, I lost one 10 years ago that i could have put my whole fist in its mouth really and not even gotten cut <laughs> oh my gosh so, i haven't forgotten that one what did that yeah. one eat uh, i did a um 52 a 52 cool cool yeah 52 mr uh that was the last time i ever fished 10 pound fluoro <laughs> it broke off that's a that's a, that's a good thing to talk about what is your what's your leader you kind of break down um, for trout fishing up there i use 20 pound 20 pound uh, and in, in, in all water clarities and everything always using 20 pound yeah 20 pound fluoro um i just i don't want to be in another situation where i break off like that um i i used to fish mono uh extensively as like the main line um but i, I lost a lot of nice fish last year i think i um i think i hooked probably 20 fish that were over the mark and I only got eight of them. Really? Um, so this year, this year I'm like I'm switching to braid, uh, switch swap hooks. Uh, we're gonna get some good hook sets. Yeah, for sure. Um, <laughs> what what kind of rod do you fish? Are you fishing spinning rods or with your trout kind of like 
knowledge are you throwing a lot of bait casters like the guys down in texas that trout fish hard i'm i, I throw a bait caster and a spinning rod okay. um i'm not i'm not good with a bait caster yeah i, I get a, i get excited and i'll bird's nest <laughs> um i fish uh water loose. have you heard of them yeah yeah that's out of texas uh, right yeah the, the salinities uh-huh. um they're, they're awesome uh i mean good backbone light rod uh really really good rod for basically any twitch bait yeah sweet yep do you fish no, no, any uh do you fish any true jerk baits like rapala jerk baits or or mega bass or anything like that uh that's something i want to try this year okay. um so i picked up some of those uh jerk baits that uh chris bush just sold uh-huh uh, they look good so i'm gonna catch one on that sweet so that's kind of like a goal for the year. I'll tell you one thing that, that I like to do when I'm moving with my trolling motor and a lot of buddies that I have or that I know do it on the kayak too when they're kind of moving through an area, throw a jerk bait out the back and just drag oh. it behind the boat while you're – and you'll catch your biggest fish when you're like moving spot to spot and you, you learn like, oh, there's some fish laying off this point or in this little gut, you know. So yeah. don't be afraid to do about, that. <laughs> about trolling, I mean I've caught some nice fish trolling. Heck yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've lost some nice fish trolling too, because I mean, usually like the baits move and they hit it. You don't get a hook set; they're on the back hook. Yeah. Uh, so I've had a lot shake off that way, but that, I I found probably my favorite spot now trolling. Yeah. Like I used to always go past it. Now I'm like, nope, this is where I'm going. <laughs> That's awesome. So one question that that I want to ask you that I've kind of I keep forgetting to, but you talk about you really like shallow water, mm-hmm. and so many people will say, oh, I like shallow water, I like deep water. But it really needs to be explained by each person because somebody – I might call shallow water eight feet. You might call shallow water two feet. It's like, so what is shallow water for you up there when you're targeting speckled trout? Uh, I mean – What's the sweet depth that you like to fish? Two to four. Two to four, um, okay. Two is probably like the – not the most numbers, but more big fish. Three's three is good. Um, five's too much for me. Yeah. Um, I've caught them as shallow as like 18 inches. Um but yeah, two to four is prime. Sweet, sweet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, it, I have a buddy here who's a kayak fisherman. His name's Elias, and he ha- he actually has a YouTube channel and does a bunch of, of YouTube. Uh, he right, caught he makes a his, nice trout the other day. Yeah, he caught a really nice trout, and he caught that in like yeah. 13 feet of water. And we, we both fish very differently, and that's uh-huh. what's made us such good networking buddies in the as far as fishing goes is because we it gets both of our wheels turning. Like he might have been out and – Done, you know, caught a bunch of trout that day in deeper water, and I didn't catch any trout, or vice versa. He found the red redfish were chewing in deep water, and I was looking for them with their backs out of the water and four inches of water, and they weren't doing it, and then vice versa. So it really gets your wheels turning to to find buddies that fish differently than you and fish with oh, them, it, and and you'll awesome. learn more that way for sure. Yeah, I mean, some of my best trout friends like. They fish totally different than me, and we share info, and it, it's cool. Yeah, like to- totally different. That's cool. Um, so I, I still haven't gotten a deep water fish that's over twenty four. I'd like one. You need to get some of uh, those shads that Elias has. Those seven inch swim swim shads. Oh, that, yeah. Those things those work are cool. Those things work great. But the, man, I'll tell you what. All all of my big fish this year. Well, actually, two of them came on on seventeens, uh, but every all the other ones came on. Uh, the five inch diesel minnows, the the soft really? plastic Z Man diesel minnows. Yeah, what I love about that. Do you fish much soft plastics, much swim baits? Mostly. I, I I need to more. Uh, I I know some people have caught some nice ones on diesel minnows. Um, I just I haven't uh, except for those flicks. Yeah. Um, that kind of another thing I need to upgrade is my plastic game. Well, it's a lot of people, man, just love that hard bait stuff, and I I, I wish mm-hmm. I could fish it more. But we have some heavy current in areas that I just don't like fishing the hard baits, and especially with clients. Oh, I don't blame you. Um, it's yeah. hard for clients to fish a 17 MR in heavy current and it's hard to, I mean, it's hard for anyone to, um, mm-hmm. but man, just, just slow rolling those diesel minnows, just throw it out there, let it hit the bottom and just reel it just fast enough that it's like an inch or two off the bottom. Oh my gosh. They'll about rip the rod out of your hand when they eat it. I mean, they just smash it when they do. And there's some, some yeah. really good colors out there for them now. I was going to say they have good colors. Yeah. Like, they got some really good is, colors. I need to step up my Z man game. <laughs> They want you to, trust me. They want you to step it up. <laughs> Z-Man does. Um, so is there anything else tactics-wise that you want to kind of go into? I think we've talked about your, your tackle. and um, How about this when you're working through an area? Like how, how often are you casting if you're like working down a bank looking for fish until you're like, okay, they're not on this bank? Or how long do you pick an area apart for? 
Um, I mean, I won't work it like to death. I'll, I'll spend like 30 minutes in an area mm-hmm. and then move like like 50 feet down. Yeah. Um, so maybe that is working it to death. Um, but uh, like especially with top water, I try to keep it moving. Um, not as much with the 27, but uh, it, if nothing's happening, um, I'm usually looking yeah. instead of grinding in one spot. Definitely. Um, so, and when I'm looking, I'll, I'll troll behind me. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's a tough thing with trout fishing is knowing when to move because mm-hmm. sometimes sitting there and just beating the heck out of one area is how you catch that big fish. And oh, I actually, yeah. I feel like more times than not, that's when I get my big fish is really picking an area apart. But you have to know yeah. they're there. That's the big part is like you have to know those fish are in that zone. Um, so that um, that eight and a half, I mean, I beat that spot to death, but. I knew they were there. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was like the most obvious thing ever. Like it was like in the most shallow area, um, tons of mullet, like tons of mullet and like random toilet bowl flushes. Like, okay, that's a big trout. Yeah. That's a big trout. I'm going to sit here and throw the tackle box until I figure it out. Um, and my angle wasn't working. So I swapped angles and that was, that was what was needed. That's huge. So instead of bringing it to the bank, I needed to bring it off the bank. Um, and the first cast that way just wow. um yeah it was cool uh <laughs> it's that, there that's was, crazy there was more fish in that school um i lost one right after that those um i saw it it's probably 24 25 nice um so f- finding that school and i'm like i'm gonna sit on it until <laughs> until it's done definitely um i think that's one thing that people don't realize and that i don't take advantage of enough either um, is is trying to play those different angles because those trout are going to position themselves on a bank, you know. And you got to think a fish's world is small, so when it's sitting down there on the bottom, it's kind of setting itself up. I don't care if it's a trout or a redfish for like the certain movement of a bait. Yeah. Like this bait's going to come through this way. These are going to be the ones I eat. I'm going to have the the best ability to strike this bait. So if you know there's fish in an area, whether it be redfish or trout or flounder play around with that angle because those fish are setting themselves up for, for a certain way or watch how the actual bait is working its way through there. Cause that fish, there's a fish in there. He's probably going to be set up in the best ambush position mm-hmm. for that bait. So that uh, that's cool. I'm glad you brought that up. Cause that's something a lot of times I forget about too. I make a cast at a point and if it doesn't get blown up the first time, I'm sometimes just moving yeah. on. But, and like on that one, like all the, all the blow ups were like right on the edge of this bar. So it's like, they're either facing one way on the bar or the other way. Yeah. So, that's, yeah, that's I just chose the wrong one for about an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, at least the fish stayed there and let you make make the other cast, and, and you got them. Yep. yep. Right on. Well, is there anything else tactics wise that you want to touch on as as far as trout fishing up there goes? Um, I mean, I, I think that's about it. Cool. Uh, it's big grind, but a lot of fun. Yeah, um, definitely. I think there was yeah. one more thing that you had brought up pre-show when we were talking that I really was interested in, and. You're talking about, and you hear this with a lot of trout fishermen, but everyone's got a different take on it. Like you talked about targeting a bite. So oh, like, yeah. how do you target a bite? Like, how do you say like oh, that? Man. I'm going to target this fish. I'm going to target a big bite. Um, so first thing, uh, I mean, we already talked about bait, uh, looking for an average size of the fish. Um, so, I mean, I, I think I said earlier, I, I leave schooly trout. Um, I'm looking for more like the like low twenties and up. Um, and if you find that, usually you can find a bigger bite, um, looking for the right water clarity, uh, the birds, um, fishing big baits and targeting the right conditions. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, probably the most important thing is, is leaving the schoolies, leave the silver sides behind, leave the shrimp behind, um, find the big bait the, the trout will be with it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's huge. Um, I would agree. And there, there's been times that I've, I've hooked decent fish out of those schoolies, but never like a citation fish. Like you'll catch some 22s, 23s with 15s, but mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure people have caught bigger fish, but you're not, yeah. you're usually not going to catch that 27, 28, 29. I guess I can't <laughs> speak on a 28, a 29 or a 30 cause I haven't caught them, but I've hooked them. Uh, you're not going to catch those with the 15s usually. Maybe not. Maybe 50 yards down the bank. But if you're like just banging little ones every cast, it's the same thing mm-hmm. with redfish. If those little guys are mixed in with those other fish, a lot of times you're just going to catch little ones. They're dumber. They're more aggressive. They they feed harder. So yeah, all the fish I've got over six were they were not with small fish. I mean, yeah. they were maybe with a couple other fish in the 
similar size range. Yeah. So looking for that. And when you find it, it's like the Holy grail. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's, it's funny. We had, me and a buddy had a good day on, on this dock that had some good fish on it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, we got in there bad conditions we were like working down the couple docks. We're hitting a lot of little fish on these docks. So we're like, dude, let's just go like 100 yards down. And we, we pulled up at this older dock that had like some more growth and threw in there his first cast and just thump. And it was a big one. And we got it to the boat. Three casts later, I hooked one, pulled it off. Like 10 casts later, I hooked another one. And mm-hmm. there was all these big fish in there. So the next day, we were like, both of us had to do stuff. We were like supposed to be at the house. He was supposed to be doing something with his fiance. And like, I think my wife went to work for a little bit. And I, I like, called him i was like dude let's go back down there so we went back down there caught two more citations on the same dock yep. um yep. it's That's just how it crazy is. how people think they don't live together they definitely live together oh and when you find them like grind them hard for like three days in a row because yeah. they, they're not gonna like move immediately right um so that's that's huge um good friend of mine i mean his biggest to date uh 32 inches per, i think it was like 12 pounds uh-huh. was in a school school of fish that big really <laughs> yeah he, he, he broke off two fish before he got that one that is awesome that he broke them off though too because he, he went from he was so devastated <laughs> and then so devastated again and then he got one he's like there's no way so oh man I that's mean, awesome the the school of 30s is out there we just got to grind hard enough to find them yeah and one thing i encourage everyone to do that listens to this podcast that likes to target big trout is Go back right now because you might not have you might not have taken notes on it beforehand. But look at your pictures. Figure out where oh, yeah. you caught those bigger fish this past year. When it was, what the conditions were, and we didn't have in Virginia. Y'all didn't have a freeze. We didn't have a freeze. Those fish are going to be back and they're going to be bigger and they're creatures oh, of man. habit and they're going to go to the same areas. So go target those same areas in the same conditions, the same tides, the same times, same moons moon phases, and you're going to find some nice trout this year. I feel like. We're gonna Instagram is gonna be flooded with with gator trout from uh, North Carolina and Virginia this year. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this fall is gonna be just absurd. I mean, like it's already reaching absurd levels up here. I can't imagine what it's gonna be like in the fall. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, it's gonna be fun. Uh, well, cool. Was there anything else? We're at like forty. We're at fifty minutes, and and we could keep going as long as you want. But I I feel like we've given everybody a good taste of Virginia trout yeah. fishing. I want to drive up there right now and get a kayak and come fishing with you, but. I got a baby due like any day, so I, I probably shouldn't jet out. So, um, <laughs> I know the feeling. Yeah, uh, the f- I went through it last year, um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I release all my big fish. Um, I encourage anyone to do that. Sweet. Um, re- reason being, like those fish, they're old. They have lived through freezes. Uh, I, I put a lot of effort into catching them. I, I value them a little bit differently than like yeah. uh, a Chick Fil A sandwich. Um, <laughs> keep, keeping like the males is good. I like the. I mean, keep a limit of like 20 inch males or 18 inch males, yeah. um, but release the big ones just because uh, it, it helps our fishery. So. so people always ask me, how do you tell the difference between a male and a female clients? And I always just say the grunting, like if they're making yep. noise, it's a male. Is there another way to tell if it's a male besides that? that uh, you know of? So that's, that's how I tell. Um, okay. Usually like a female will have like a little more belly and a male's yeah. like thicker. Um, a big male will fight way harder than like a female of the yeah. same size. That's, that's another thing. Yeah. Um, I got a 24 inch male like uh, two years ago, and oh my god. Yeah, it, it's like it, a little red drum. Yeah, it was like crazy. a decent size red drum. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, cool. Yeah. Well, yeah. So li- if it's grunting, it's a male. Don't feel bad about killing killing the decent sized mm-hmm. males, but the females definitely let them go. You guys, it's uh, it's important. They've got thousands of more eggs, especially once they get over 20 inches. So uh, yeah. That's a, it's, it's definitely good practice. Mm-hmm. Well, cool, man. Well, thank you so much for coming on. If there's nothing else, I guess we'll go ahead and close her out. Cool. Thanks, man. Yeah, for sure. And, and you guys it, it, go check, uh, Charlie out on Instagram. If you're watching this video, you've obviously seen it at the bottom. It's Charlie church three. Um, but it's just at Charlie church three, if you're listening. So go follow him. He's just, he takes really good pictures of these big fish and, uh, he's been fun to follow and, and, and just, uh, give him a look and, and uh, check out those big Virginia trout that are going to be down in North Carolina here this fall. You can kind of see what we're going to be working with. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> well, guys, thanks so much for checking out another episode of Eastern Current. Uh, we will be back at you next Tuesday. Later. <laughs>